Hey everyone, today I am gonna to be talking to you finally about this stock here. This is the Viper PDW sock from Strike Industries on my little 556 SBR 11 and a half inch um, SBR. Uh, you guys have probably seen this in a bunch of videos already, but now I'm finally gonna be doing my review on it. I have some interesting tests uh, that I'm gonna be doing it with. Uh, well, at least one interesting test, at least I think it's interesting. Um, you guys can make that determination for yourself, but I wanted to get a lot of testing through this thing before I finally did my review, um, just because I know there's so many different variables when it comes to ARs. So I wanted to test it in as many different situations as I could, suppressed, unsuppressed, 556, 300 blackout, 762 by 39, um, in as many different barrel lengths as possible, just to give you guys as much information about this stock as possible, and hopefully give you an idea based on what type of rifle you're gonna be putting on, how well it'll work for you. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just roll in some footage of me shooting this thing and then we'll get back together and then I'll talk to you about some of the specifics of this stock. So one of the first things you probably noticed in regards to this specific stock is the color. So this one is actually their FDE version. They also have an all black version. Um, personally, when they asked me which color uh, I wanted to pick up, um, I went ahead and did the FDE because I figured it would match this paint job a little bit better than the black. And with that, I should go ahead and say full disclosure, I did not pay for this PDW stock. Um, uh, Strike Industries provided it to me at no cost. Um, but that said, I think you guys will be able to see for yourself um, what kind of stuff this thing is capable of. And uh, you know, again, you can make the determination for yourself. So you've probably seen me pull this thing on and off. What this is, is an optional cheek rest. You can either have it or don't have it. I will say right away, if you have a beard, you probably want this because I have found that the uh, their castle nut here um, has a tendency to grab onto beard. So having this little cheek rest is gonna help prevent that, as well as just giving you a little bit more real estate and a little bit more comfort as far as having a cheek weld on your rifle. Um, just my own personal preference. The one thing about it is that when you have this thing collapsed, um, it does stick out a little bit further. And I thought, well, that's weird. Why would they design it that way? However, I don't ever foresee there being a situation where I'm gonna be using this thing collapsed. It's not practical. I'm not gonna be able to even get my eyes behind the sights on this thing. If anything, it's just gonna be able to be thrown in a bag with this thing collapsed. So to me, it's a non-issue. Now, one thing worth noting, you cannot take on and off this thing all the way with it, uh, with the stock collapsed. You have to extend it. Now, the way that this thing extends and collapses is why currently, this is my favorite PDW stock that I've ever used on any AR style rifle or even some like the HK style collapsible stocks. There's a big old button right under here. When you push that button, it shoots this thing out and you're ready to rock and roll. Um, one of the issues I've had with other PDW stocks is they take a long time to actually get ready to use. And in my opinion, for a PDW or personal defense weapon, when I need it, I need it now. I don't need to be sitting there fumbling with different lengths and all that. I just need this thing to open up and uh, be ready to go. That time it actually released the bolt. Um, but it locks into place and you're ready to go put this thing into action right away. Um, now, so again, you only have the one position. So is this gonna be ideal for something you're putting a magnified optic on? Maybe, maybe not. Um, honestly, at that point, you can just gauge based off the length of this where that magnified optic needs to be. But if you're running a red dot like this, to me, it doesn't matter what that length is. Um, for me, it's just perfect at this one length that it uh, comes with. And to collapse it, you push that button in and then push the stock in and you can release it. You're probably wondering, well, can I still actuate the safety with this thing collapsed? And since I have an ambi safety, you can see, yes, indeed I can. I can do it on either side and work it just fine. Now, just FYI, this is one of the Magpul Noveski short throw levers. Um, so it may be different with others, but I don't think so because the fat part is the part that's swinging down. So it's not, it shouldn't go up and impede, even if you have a select fire third position, um, it's still not gonna impede against that. The only thing that having it collapse prevents you from doing is drifting out your takedown pin back here. For that, you do have to have it extended in order to pull out your takedown pin to do that. 
One of the other things that I really like about this, as you probably just noticed, is you can actually uh, open up your upper receiver, super easy for cleaning and maintenance, and you get to use whatever bolt carrier, excuse me, bolt carrier group you want. So in here right now, I have a Spike Tactical phosphate bolt carrier that I've been running in this upper for a long time. Um, a lot of the PDW socks require you to use a proprietary um, bolt carrier group that also make it a pain in the ass to actually disassemble and take your upper off. Again, this is not the case. So if you have your favorite nickel boron or titanium nitride or black nitride or whatever else bulk carrier you like or suppressor friendly one if that you like, you can keep on using it and use this PDW stock. Um, it just uses a little bit slightly different recoil system since obviously this is gonna be shorter than your mil spec uh, receiver extension or buffer tubes. And then the other thing that I really like about this one over a lot of the other ones I've used is there are literally um, some of the uh, PDW socks that look straight up like a meat tenderizer. I don't know why anyone thought it'd be comfortable to put a meat tenderizer into your shoulder and start shooting it. Uh, this one actually has a really nice butt pad down here. I'll probably have to roll in a picture just to keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction uh, so you guys can see. But it's a really nice kind of rubberized um, uh, butt stock that is really comfortable in your shoulder and to me works a lot better than a straight up meat tenderizer. But I, I guess you can make that determination for yourself. If you're a, if you're a sadist and you like uh, self-flagellation or anything like that, then maybe you want a meat tenderizer. Personally, I don't, so hence why I like this one. And again, instead of having to sit here and fumble around with it, once I pull this out of my bag to use, I just pop it out and I'm ready to go. Um, one thing as far as features, again, as you can see right under here, there is a QD sling mount, which is how I've usually used it. In fact, if you watch the, um, the video I did on the Vickers uh, padded Vickers sling, um, that's how I had it mounted. And then also, if you feel so inclined, there is a QD mount slot back here at the very tail end of it, which obviously you can't use in conjunction with this little cheek rest. Um, so, now that I've talked about some of the general features of this thing, um, let's go ahead and test it with a bunch of different barrel lengths so you guys can get an idea of how it might run for your rifle. So while I don't have an upper on it, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like on the uh, buffer and spring. So instead of your traditional like T, uh, H or C or H2, you just have this little plug here and I'll roll in a close up picture. And then you have one of their flat, uh, the Strike Industries kind of flat uh, springs. Uh, that's what makes it so that you're able to use your uh, a non-proprietary BCG, so whatever mil spec BCG you want, but it still retains in the same way. So again, you can take your upper on and off. So to start out, we're gonna use the shortest barrel length I have, which is a seven and a half inch. And all the barrels we're gonna be shooting today um, are in 556, 223 or 223 Wild. Uh, I'm just gonna do about 10 rounds in each of them. And uh, I'm just gonna be canning some optics and charging handles as I have to, because I have a seven and a half, 10 and a half, 11 and a half, six, uh, 14, five, 16, and an 18. So we should be able to cover most of the barrel links out there. So let's go ahead and do 10 rounds and see if this thing wants to function, which, uh, I think I already know how this is going to go because I may have already done a test like this before, but I wasn't recording it. And make sure I can get this tenth one. All right. Functioned just fine. <laughs> I uh, have not shot a seven and a half inch barrel much because there's not a whole lot of practicality to them in my opinion, but I have an entire video on that. So let's go ahead and move on to the 10 and a half. Again, I'm gonna have to be canning a bunch of stuff back and forth here since I have more uppers than I do charging handles and PCGs right now. But I guess that's a good problem to have, maybe? So this is a, ten a that seven and a half, just in case anyone was wondering was a Fax and Firearm seven and a half inch barrel that is actually seven and a half inches, unlike the, what was supposed to be seven and a half inch barrel on it before. Um, this is a uh, Strike Industries, actually, 10.3 inch barrel uh, with a Timber Creek handguard, which I'm gonna be doing a review on here very shortly, and a Strike Fire 2 on it currently. Did I already came around? No. 
So let's do 10 rounds with a 10.3 inch barrel. Get that 10th round. All right. So 10.3 works just fine. Let's go ahead and do one that I know works fine because that's what I've been shooting it with predominantly. And that is that 11 and a half inch BCM. So BCM enhanced lightweight barrel with the key mod KMR hand, uh, hand guard. Get my red dot back, which it's on an ADM mount that I know returns to zero exceptionally well. So I'm not even worried about it. So let's go ahead. And in case I didn't mention it, all the ammo I'm running is standard 55 grain, full metal jackets, uh, brass case stuff. So ammo that I know it works with. So let's go ahead and do 10 rounds. It's almost like a muzzle brake test. That thing was punishing. Okay, so 10 rounds of 11.5 work just fine. Let's move on to, ah. Actually, let's go ahead and talk about this since it just happened now. Um, I have found, actually, you know what? Uh, go to this time code because I don't want to stop right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it now, but I'm going to cut this footage in after we run through just so that uh, everything kind of is in its own place. So next up, we have this 14.5 barrel, which is currently wearing a primary arms uh, scope. Um, normally, this is not what goes uh, on this uh, upper however I've been doing some accuracy testing with this upper so that's what's on it right now and uh, this scope is or this um, upper is normally on a different lower so the eye relief is all messed up but uh, I should be able to get them safely into the berm so 14.5 again 55 grain full metal jacket ammo Move on to the 16 inch barrel. Oh, and uh, this one is a Spikes Tactical Complete Upper with their 14 5 inch uh, barrel. Uh, Spikes Tactical Hand Guard, Brake, um, ECG. Um, I just threw a Raptor charging handle in here for now. Um, but yeah, you'll be seeing a lot more of this very soon. This upper should be no stranger to anyone who's been following my channel. This is my 16 inch BCM upper currently being used for another test right now. Let's go ahead and put 10 rounds through it real quick. Uh, it's helping me out with a magazine um, torture test video, which will be coming around probably around the same time as this one. Let's go ahead and do, yeah, again, eye relief is set up for a different lower, so let's just go ahead and do 10 rounds. All right. Now let's do an 18 inch upper. Uh, and again, I guess just for reference, since I should probably go more in depth. Again, same KMR rail as the uh, 11 and a half, just obviously longer. Um, it's not their enhanced lightweight barrel. It's one of their more fuller profiles. And I got a primary arms one to six uh, on top, which I have done a review on if you guys care to look for that. Um, yeah, let's move on to 18 inch. All right, now this 18 inch is a Aero Precision Upper with an Aero Precision Barrel, 223 Wild, again, 18 inch. Um, I've done a bunch of videos on this upper already to include an accuracy test. Normally it's wearing the uh, optic that is on that 14.5, um, but it's on the 14.5. So I have my Midwest Industries mount with the Vortex Diamondback HP on it. Let's go ahead and do 10 rounds with a rifle length gas system, which I should say uh, the 14.5 and the 16, or the 16 was the mid length. I think the 14.5 was either mid or carbine. Um, anyway, I'm pretty much doing all the different gas lengths here and hence the point of doing the different barrel lengths also. Oh boy. Right. So, one, two, three, four, five, six different barrel lengths with at least three different gas lengths, if not four. 
uh, between mid, carbine, uh, rifle, and pistol. Uh, it works fine with all of them. Now again, this is not a comprehensive test by any means. However, um, it should go to show you that it works just fine. And a lot of those ejections, I don't see anything that came out straight 3 o'clock. Most of those ejections, as you can see from the video, were going pretty much to the 1 or 2 o'clock, which is what you want. So, um, so yeah. Um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this, <laughs> this, this stock. So, as I took that upper off, you guys saw that the... Um, the plug and the spring came out. That is something I've been experiencing. Now, if you guys have looked at other um, uh, plugs or the, the buffers for AR-15s, they usually have these little flat out areas. I have found that the flat areas on here are so flat that sometimes if it's positioned just right, it will not retain against your detent. That has not affected function whatsoever. It'll still function. It's only once I actually take the upper off that that comes out, but it's not like a little detent up here for your pivot pin where it goes shooting across the room and you're never going to see it again. Um, it's something that it just kind of pops into the upper receiver, so I'm able to put it back in right away. But just something that I have noticed that is a downside, I guess. However, I don't think most people are going to be, you know, taking uppers on and off like I am. So I don't think it'll be a serious issue, but it is something worth noting and something worth letting you guys know I have experienced. So in addition to the six uppers you just saw me test this thing with, I've also shot it with my 10 and a half inch 300 blackout a lot, both supers and subs. Now, I was running into an issue, I can't remember which silencer it was, honestly, off the top of my head, but there was a silencer I was using where it would not cycle subsonic ammo, um, even with a silencer, with this stock. And it was pretty much right after I threw the stock on. It was the first time I'd shot 300 blackout suppressed since putting this stock on. So I wasn't sure, is it the stock's problem or is the silencer not providing enough back pressure? Um, so I even threw it on my pistol lower, which is just a regular pistol buffer tube and it also wouldn't cycle. So, but I didn't really know for sure until I was able to get another silencer into test. And if you guys have seen already, I've done a review of the Griffin Optimus silencer and I shot that a ton on this stock. Specifically, I wanted to test it with this stock shooting again both supers and subs of 300 blackout and it functioned 100%. I had zero cycling issues with this stock. So I feel okay in saying that it is the fault of the um, silencer that was not providing enough back pressure because I don't have like an adjustable gas block in, in that 300 blackout upper. Um, so I was running into the issues, but I think it was the silencer's issue since it started running fine um, on this with the other silencer and since that other silencer wouldn't work on my pistol lower either where traditionally typically silencers have functioned on that no no problem so take that for what it is you can make the determination for yourself um, but that's the impression that i got with it at least um, but yeah so i've tested this thing with a 762 by 39 upper from pws um, you guys have probably seen that video um, again i wanted to make sure i tested it with this stock to see how it did with other calibers as well unfortunately I don't have a bunch of 7.62 by 39 uppers, so I was only able to test it at that one barrel length. But considering it worked fine on that one, I'm sure it would work fine with like a 16 inch or a 14.5 or whatever barrel length they're making the 7.62 by 39 uppers in. So um, you, can, you can figure that out for yourself, how that's gonna apply to you. Um, as far as the ease of install on these, um, it was super easy to install. I have an entire dedicated video on the installation on these things. However, one thing I will want to uh, point out that was kind of disappointing to me um, was when you're having to thread off this castle nut in order to actually install it into your uh, lower receiver, um, you have to take this thing pretty far back. I was kind of bummed, and this is a totally superficial thing, it has nothing to do with the function of it, but I was kind of bummed that the um, buffer tube up here, let me see if I can focus in on this that the buffer tube up here was actually scratched by this castle nut. Um, is, does that in any way prevent it from functioning properly? No, absolutely not. And it's really only in that one area that I received, uh, that I received those scratches. So, so is that a deal breaker? Absolutely not in my opinion, especially since I always run it with this little cheek rest installed anyway. As far as the cheek rest, it does take quite a bit of pressure to take it on and off. So it's not the kind of thing where if you store it with the stock extended, this thing is gonna come off on its own. I, it, it does take some force to actually get it on and off. It's a nice tight seal on there. 
for what that's worth. And the installation process was, was really, really simple with these. Um, I was able to do it with a regular AR Armors wrench. I had someone in the comments say it's supposed to be used with a different wrench. Whatever. Um, it worked for me, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Now, again, I, I have used other PDW stocks, and I've never really been a huge fan of them. They've always impeded function in some way, shape, or form. They were super uncomfortable to use, or you had to use a proprietary BCG, which, you know, if that's fine with you, then hey, that's fine with you. But I know a lot of people, especially like 300 blackout shooters who run those like Gemtech suppressor-friendly bolts or even, you know, SBRs, they use those for people who run cans. And for those people, you're investing a lot of money into that bolt carrier group. In fact, more money than these uh, PDW stocks cost. Um, and the last thing you want is to spend a bunch of money on a BCG that you can no longer use um, because now you have this other fancy lower or this fancy stock system. But again, this allows you to do that. And again, whatever weight system they're using, it works fine. Again, from a pistol length, seven and a half inch barrel, all the way up to a rifle length, 18 inch barrel. So I feel pretty comfortable in saying that it'll probably work on whatever you put it on um, to include 762 by 39 or 300 blackout. Now, as far as any downsides that I can find with these, um, you know, I, you saw earlier that the, um, the little plug came out, but again, it just comes out into the upper receiver, doesn't go shooting off like the takedown pin detents and springs. So to me, it's kind of a non-issue. I wish it didn't happen, but it, it's not gonna, you know, make the gun stop working in a gunfight or anything crazy like that. So you can decide for yourself whether that's an issue. To me, it's certainly not a deal breaker at the very least. Um, the other thing is the cost, but honestly, pretty much any PDW stock you look at is gonna be fairly expensive. However, this one gives you features that you don't get with a lot of those other ones, like I've already mentioned several times, but I'll do the same again, a comfortable stock. And again, the spring actuation, which you can even just use your shoulder. You can do it all one-handed. You can do the extension one-handed. You can do collapsing it one-handed. So um, totally functional. You still have the sling loop and you can do this with the sling loop Ugh, dexterity and grip um, and still be able to rock and roll single-handed you don't have to worry about sitting there and fumbling with it and you know lock you know holding it and getting it oh is it the right length oh no my eye relief isn't right i gotta change it to the different setting um it just it just works and that's what i want because again as far as i'm concerned if it's a pdw gun a personal defense weapon if i'm going to need it i'm going to need it right now so i don't want to have to sit here and fumble with it i want to be able to pull it out of a bag or from off the passenger seat or wherever it's at pop this the stock out and be able to rock and roll with it right away and put rounds uh, on the bad guy as um, it just uh, was evident again not the most super beard friendly but normally it's not an issue I've only had you know a handful um, of beard hairs get pulled out and I've shot probably easily a thousand rounds now uh, through this PDW stock so um, I, I feel I feel good about it so um, I guess to kind of wrap things up, if you are looking for a PDW stock, especially if you have a bunch of different uppers or whatever you want to put on it, um, especially for an SBR, it'll work. If you don't have an SBR and you have like a 14.5 or a 16 inch barrel, this will still work with it. It might make the balance kind of feel funny, um, but it will still function no problem, at least from my experience, how I've done it um, out here. Again, you guys saw it for yourselves as well. Again, not the cheapest thing in the world, but again, that's pretty much to be expected when it comes to the PDW stocks. So if, if that's what you're looking to do, um, in my opinion, as the market currently stands, this one is my favorite and this is the one I would recommend to people. And in fact, I have recommended to people um, if, if some of them may be watching this video, but they've asked me my thoughts on this thing and I, I was very, very comfortable in saying, yeah, go ahead and get this thing. It's been working great for me. Um, my assumption is that there may be more colors coming in the future, but for now it's just the FTE in the black, which is fine for me, considering as you can see from this, I like to spray paint my guns anyway. Um, but again, you know, if you want to have them Cerakoted or Duracoated, you can always do that after the fact also. Uh, one thing I want to mention is with really any PDW stock or even any regular mil spec stock, if you need to mortar it, I would recommend collapsing the buttstock first and actually probably taking this thing off so you don't have this weird thing sticking out um, to, before you mortar it, just to give this thing as much structural rigidity as possible. 
um, but as far as actually functioning goes, it'll work just fine in the fully extended uh, position. And for me, again, especially with this cheek rest, it's comfortable, slightly less comfortable if you take this thing off. But again, you can make the determination for yourself once it arrives as to whether you wanna run it with the cheek rest or without. Um, but again, my personal preference is running it with the cheek rest. Um, now I'm sure most of you at this point have probably asked, um, at, asked the screen, well, are they gonna be doing a PDW brace? And if you guys have seen the video I did at SHOT Show with Strike Industries from this last year, you know that they are coming. Um, PDW braces are coming. So for those of you who don't wanna worry about the $200 tax stamp and ass pain that was uh, filing this lower and registering it with the ATF, they do have braces coming. So you don't have to worry about all that. Um, don't ask me for an ETA. For some reason, people always leave comments in my videos assuming that I work for the company and can answer all those intricate questions. I don't know. Contact Strike Industries and ask them uh, what the ETA is. But so far, um, again, I'm really happy with this and I'm really excited to see when those PDW braces come out because I have some lowers that I think it would go very well on. So I hope I answered any questions you guys had regarding this PDW sock. I wanted to cruise through this pretty quick because I know I have a tendency to go long-winded and I'm sure this video is gonna be pretty lengthy as it is, um, but I wanted you guys to know everything that uh, I think is worth knowing about this stock. Um, again, I'm just really happy with it. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw those in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, if you guys are interested, I do also have a Patreon page. Um, the people who support me on there are super, super helpful in helping you know fund the ammo for videos like these um, because sometimes I do have to go out and purchase my own ammo. So if you feel so inclined, go ahead and check out my Patreon page. I post uh, some exclusive content there as, post as well as posting all my content there early. Um, so check that out, do with that information what you will. But as always, I hope you're able to get something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.